is just so good. It's so good. This recipe is so incredibly delicious. Strawberry season has me in all the strawberry recipes right now. This one is top notch, stay tuned. All right, friends, we are starting with a nice big heaping bowl of strawberries. Once we get these all cut, I'll transfer them over to this other bowl and we'll start to create that filling. Now these strawberries, most of them are pretty nice and ripe. So I don't have to do a lot of prep work to these. I'm just cutting them into fours like so, and we'll toss them into that bowl. Some of them are a really beautiful deep red, and that is exactly what you want for a dessert like this. I actually also have this right here. Let me show you. It's this little device right here, which is a strawberry huller. You can get these on Amazon. I'm pretty sure that's where I got mine. Put it at the top where the leaves are and give it a good twist and it will pull out that that pit. I guess it's not really a pit because it's not a seed. One time what we did is took this took out the middle of the strawberry. Instead of doing chocolate covered strawberries, we actually put the chocolate into the strawberry. They, it was a really neat take on chocolate covered strawberries. And honestly, it was really easy to do. So if you want something like that, I'll have it listed in my description box. So I don't know if I said, but I'm using about a pound of strawberries. You can use more, you can use less, you can double this recipe, you can half this recipe, do whatever it is that is appropriate for your size family. We actually made this the other night and it was so delicious that I knew I had to come on here and make it again. Let me know in the comments below because I know you guys all watch from so many different places, even other countries. Is it strawberry season where you live as well? We're gonna go ahead and preheat our oven to 350. And my Dutch oven is usually hanging out in here. So let's take that out. So we have one quarter cup of cornstarch. I'm actually using arrowroot flour and this is just a preference. You can use whatever you wanna use. It is not a big deal either way, but we're going to just coat the strawberries with the cornstarch. And all this is gonna do is help to thicken that up when the filling is kind of like coming together. So I probably could have used my next size bowl, but we're gonna, we're gonna make this work so I'm not constantly dirtying tons of bowls here. All right, so we're gonna add the rest of that in, make sure it's nice and incorporated. And obviously you can also do this with a spoon if you prefer to incorporate it that way. I don't know, I just, for some reason, we have four pair of tongs, you guys. I'm not exaggerating because I cook with tongs with everything. All right, we have one quarter cup of sugar here and we're gonna add this in and also incorporate it. And we are using this coarse grain sugar, but you can use whatever kind of sugar you prefer. That's just the one that we've been buying lately. You just want some sort of citrusy kind of juice. So last time we used orange juice. I've also used lemon juice in the past when I've made this and that's what we're using this time. So we have one tablespoon here and we're going to pour that in and just incorporate it all together. And that citrus is just going to, I really should have used a bigger bowl. <laughs> It's okay, my counters are clean. All right, so that citrus is just going to offset the sweetness of the strawberries and really kind of pull it all together. It's, I'm telling you, you don't wanna do this without the citrus. If you have oranges, ooh, do I have oranges? No, I don't. I thought I had oranges. If you have oranges, you can also add in some of the orange zest from the peel and that is fantastic as well. So good. You just got that other element of flavor in there. So delicious. All right, so you can see these are actually looking really nicely coated. They're starting to kind of juice on their own already, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just gonna set this to the side and kind of let it marinate with it, in and of itself while we work on the topping. While that's sitting there and my oven is preheating, let's make our topping. So I do this a little bit different than you may have seen just because I like a lot of topping. <laughs> I feel like the topping is such a good part of this and you don't wanna miss out on it. So we have two thirds cup of oats here. Now, personally, I like to take a little more than two thirds cup. So when I do two thirds cup, I do a heaping two thirds cup. So we're gonna to toss that into a bowl. And we also have two thirds cup of flour. This I just measure normally. We're gonna to toss that in as well. Now I like to combine all of this with a fork 
And that might seem a little odd, but it's just, I don't know. I grew up, my mom always used our regular silverware when she cooked. And so I feel like I've kind of taken that on in some ways as well. So just gonna start incorporating this together just a little bit. We've got a half a cup of brown sugar and we're gonna incorporate that in. Now, you don't necessarily have to stir every single time you incorporate something. This is just something that, I don't know, I feel like I always do. I just want each ingredient to marry one another. And that's just, I mean, that's how it is when you, you guys have seen that before. Uh, the majority of the time when I'm cooking, I'm doing that exact same thing. And speaking of cooking, I just realized as I'm standing here making this, that I have a video that should be uploading right now and I forgot to do it. Hold please. Okay, we're back. Anybody else like to have a million things going on at one time? That's me. We have about a half teaspoon of cinnamon. We're gonna add this in. I feel like cinnamon is one of those things where if you really love cinnamon, you don't have to go easy on it. You can absolutely add more. This is completely based on your preferences. I like cinnamon, I wouldn't say that I love it, so I usually will go with whatever the recipe calls. Unless I've read through comments and then I find somebody says, oh, it tastes a lot like cinnamon, I'll adjust. We've got about a half teaspoon of salt as well. Oven is ready. Does your oven sing to you? Our oven sings and our dishwasher sings and our washing machine all three of those, they have a nice little song. They're each different. We've got about a teaspoon of extract. Most recipes when you're looking for something like this are gonna call for vanilla extract, but you guys know we prefer almond, so I pretty much always replace with almond extract. So we're just gonna toss that in, it's not much at all. And here is another place where I do things a little bit differently than many of the recipes I've seen. A lot of places say to melt your butter and put it in here, one full stick of butter. I like to just cut it up in the same way that you would cut up butter for biscuits and add it in that way. So I cut it and then just add little pieces in. Okay, we're gonna have to open a new stick in just a minute here, but for now we'll start with this one. So this is what I mean, I just cut little pieces. So you can do this however you wanna do it. You guys know a lot of times I will cut down whatever the amount of butter is that a recipe suggests, butter or oil, I'll do both. This is one of those, I just don't feel like you can. I mean, let me take that back. I don't feel like it's quite as good if you cut down on the amount of butter that goes in this one. I might be going overboard with the size of how small you really need to cut these. It's just preference, whatever you, just do what you have time for. <laughs> That's basically what it boils down to. I'm willing to bet that there is some sort of gadget out there on the market that does this for you. You know what? I have a biscuit. That's what I need to use. Let me go ahead and pull that out. I forget what this thing is called every single time I use it, but it helps with this. Oh my goodness. Look, I'm talking about needing a device and here I have this thing that is like, wow. All right, I'll have this linked in the description box too because maybe it would be helpful. All right, let's add in some more butter and I'm thinking that I maybe don't need to take as much time cutting it because that thing's doing a pretty good job. If you want to make this, but you don't really have the time to, to sit here for 10 minutes and cut up butter, go ahead and melt that stick of butter and just pour it in there, incorporate the whole thing and move on to the next step. Somebody tell me what this thing's called. I mean, I'm gonna have to figure it out when I put it in the description box, but it's like a butter cutter. This is gonna be so good, you guys. I'm telling you, when we had it a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, I think it was a couple weeks ago, it was so, Delicious. Let me let you in on another little secret that I have when making strawberry crumble or whatever you wanna call this. Strawberry crumble is what we call it, but most people tell you to use a nine by 13 pan. I think a nine by 13 pan is too big for this because it makes it really thin. I like a nice thick piece of this strawberry crumble when we're taking it out. So with that said, this is a smidge smaller than nine by 13. Let's take those strawberries that have just been sitting in those juices. We're gonna pour them here into our pan. And now we're gonna take the topping that we made and just start to spread this all over. Let me just spread these out just a bit so they're all fairly even. This might actually be better to spoon out because we don't want all the butter clumps in the same area. So that's why. That way I can kind of spread all that out 
This already looks so delicious, you guys. Oh my goodness. See, this is where the big chunks of butter are. So I'm just making sure, like there's a spot right here that doesn't really have much. So making sure that I get some there. This is going in my preheated oven that is 350 degrees and it's going in for 30 to 45 minutes. This part is not 100% necessary, but it is oh so good. We take one of these pints of heavy whipping cream. This is brand new, just picked it up today. I'm gonna pour the whole thing here into my KitchenAid mixer. If you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, that is totally fine. Just use your, re your regular hand mixer in a bowl, completely fine. Now, again, almond extract, you can use vanilla. If you like vanilla, another one that is delicious is pistachio extract. Trust me on this. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but it is so good. We're just gonna add just a touch. It's maybe a half teaspoon. Now, this next step, the reason I do it this way is because this is how we make it in our coffee shop at my church. This is a very similar recipe to what we use at our coffee shop. It's a little different, but it's close. You can absolutely use powdered sugar if you want to. 100% that will make it very, very good. You're not gonna have any issues with it but this is what I like to use. We have this over at our little coffee station in our dining room where we keep our coffees. This is just pure cane syrup. You could use a vanilla or a French vanilla or something like that, that would be delicious. I'm just gonna put three pumps of this pure cane syrup right here into the bowl and that's gonna sweeten up that whipped cream. So good. So I'm gonna lift the bowl and then I've got my whisk attachment on here. We're gonna let this whisk and it's just gonna add air into that and it's gonna make a whipped cream. The only thing I wanna tell you is don't take that whisk out too early. You want it to form soft peaks, but you don't wanna leave it in too long. You want just this nice whipped cream. This is what you want. Look at that. Oh my goodness. We obviously have to try it. It's so perfect. So perfect. Two times my doorbell rang and I just really wanna try this. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. I'm just gonna try a little bit because we're gonna be eating it after dinner tonight. Oh my goodness. We gotta get some of that whipped cream. I already know it's good because we made it the other week, but you know, we can't just let it sit here. It's so good. It is so good, you guys. The strawberries are really sweet, especially if you pick the really sweet ones. But then since you put a little bit of that lemon juice in there or orange juice, orange juice is absolutely delicious in it as well. It just makes it so good. The whipped cream though, takes it over the top. <laughs> if you have the ability to make some whipped cream, go ahead and make that up because it is so delicious. Oh my goodness, that is so good. Strawberry season is the best season. I was just gonna eat a little taste, but you know. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you stay to the end where you can see some of the outtakes. If you're new here, I would love if you would subscribe and stick around. I'm gonna have more recipes just like this here on my channel available, and we've got tons more. Check out this video right here if you need more inspiration and encouragement in the kitchen. I hope you're having a great week, bye. All right, friends, this, I hope you're having a great. All right, so you're prop. Hey guys, they'll be out in about 15 minutes. All right.